Oh, oh. Anything for the video. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here at my studio here in New York, right in the heart of Manhattan. And I am here with Sheila. So we will actually be shooting today. I'm gonna to do like a DIY lighting solution. I'm hoping to make this a series. So be sure to let me know down below if this is something you're interested in. If you don't know who I am, my name is Seth Miranda. I'm a pro photographer right here in New York. You can check out some of my work at Last X Witness on Instagram. Yell at me on Twitter, join me live on Twitch, join my Discord if you wanna join a photo nerd community, share some work, get some troubleshooting done all sorts of stuff, but the links, all links down below. Let's, let's go for this. So this is actually something I've done live in demos for years, and I've done in practice in the field in a bind situation. I actually came up with it at an ex-girlfriend's party one time. It was really weird. Uh, but the whole idea of this is forget about the stuff you're trying to buy and get into the stuff that you're trying to do. So if you can just master the principles of how light works and what you're trying to do, you can kind of use things around you to just get to a better solution than you would if you didn't have anything with you at all, right? Uh, as far as gear goes. And all professional gear started out as a DIY material type thing. It was something built in someone's garage or something. And then when you look at it in the marketplace, you realize that they just refined it to make it more consistent so that when you build that softbox, it is always the same result when you use that softbox as opposed to, you know, just randomly making something that diffuses light or, or makes a softbox happen. So that's kind of what happens here. Well, I'm gonna use a single speed light and I'm gonna light Sheila up and we're gonna go from the hard raw light from the speed light. We're gonna use some DIY material and make it softer. And we're gonna talk about what actually makes it softer and why this is actually working. So before I do that, let's get a shot to eliminate all the light in my space. I'm gonna do a black frame like this really quick. I'm gonna crunch down to F11 on my Z62 and take a shot and boom, we have a black frame. This means I am controlling all the light in the space. The only light that I'm recording is the light I'm going to make from this speed light. So I'm gonna take this speed light. It is on a C stand with an articulating arm. You guys know how much I like articulating arms. If you watched any of my demos, if you've seen any of my videos over the last few years, you know articulating arms like my jam. Uh, so let's get this into place. Let's just do a raw light on TTL for Sheila and see what we get. So I'm gonna extend this out and I'm just going to hang it upside down, which is kind of something I like to do with speed lights. And I'll just put it right overhead, straight up raw light. And we'll put it in TTL and see what we get. So this is uh, going, we know this is gonna be a hard light because that's what a light with no modifiers is. So let's just take a look at what this does. This, by the way, is just a trigger. It's not firing. In fact, I'll turn it around so there's no confusion. Let's take a look. I'm gonna TTL. I'm gonna take a look at Sheila. We'll even do it horizontal so it's nicer for the video. And click. All right, we have a nice hard light on Sheila there. So this might be nice. She is a mannequin, of course, but it is a hard light. You can see right here that there is a definitive hard line shadow. And with hard light, you get all the texture. That's kind of a property of hard light is that we're amplifying texture. We're getting hard shadow lines. So I think one of the things that people mistake soft and hard for is dim or exposure. Like if it's dimmer, somehow it's softer. Like if it's too hard, if they move the light back or lower the power, somehow it's not as harsh. That's not how lighting really works. We're trying to keep at an exposure. The way the light looks is the pattern and the quality of that light. Now, when we wanna make a light softer, what you'd wanna do is remember that the larger my light source is in relation to my subject, the softer that light. It's not diffusion. Diffusion has a side effect of being a larger light, but diffusion is really about breaking up specular highlights. So you get those hot white spots or reflections or things like that. It's actually so it scatters the light. If you think about light as if it's like water, if you missed it, it'll have less of a chance to make a hard impact. And that's kind of what diffusion is doing. It's scattering that light around. But making it larger could be relative, meaning if I did a five foot octa, it could still be a hard light source if I pull it back far enough and it's small in relation to my subject, right? That's why the sun is still a hard light source. Even though it's the size of a planet, it still is a really hard light because it's so far away from where we are, thus making it smaller in relation to us. So 
A speed light, this thing is a small light source. It's never going to be bigger than my face or anyone's face really. But there are ways for us to make it larger, which is kind of what soft boxes are doing. Well, let's say I have nothing on me. Let's say I'm at a party, you know? So again, I know some of you have seen this demo before, but I wanted to make like the definitive video on it. Well, let's say I have some, I don't know, balloons at that party. <laughs> Now, if I put this in front of my light, the light from this will transcend through this and thus this becomes my light source. Having said that, that means I get a couple of benefits and I get some negatives. One, well, it gets larger and it gets more diffused so it should be a softer light. But it also takes the color and you know the properties of this balloon, meaning if I took uh, five packs of balloons, they might not all be the same density white. Some might be thicker, some might be thinner, some might look yellower. Uh, I can tell you for a fact that this will probably warm the light up. But now I'm going to say, well, how do I get this mounted to the light? Well, I know we all have a thousand of these laying around. I know that here in New York, they're, it's a, it, they're, they're outlawing them pretty much. But luckily, the shady bodega on my Brooklyn corner is still handing these things out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and tie it to the front of my speed light and just get it on there. Now, my light source is this balloon in a bag configuration. That means my light just got way larger and that means I have a fighting chance here to make a softer pattern of light. And remember, soft light means where the gradation happens from shadow to highlight. If it's a hard line from highlight to shadow and there's a definitive line, that's a hard light. As that hard line breaks and actually has a gradation pattern to it, that's the softening of the light. When it goes from a shadow to a highlight in a gradual pattern, that's softening light. It's not about how bright it is, it's not about uh, lowering power or getting the light farther or closer away so much as it is about making it larger. Because if that light is still a small light and I move it closer, technically it's getting a little bit bigger, but it'll never be soft enough. We say the light gets softer as you bring it closer because a two by three softbox closer to our subject makes it a bigger softbox in relation if it was like across the room. That's kind of what we're talking about. But we're not gonna get into all this inverse square law right here. We're gonna go right into shooting a nice, clean, soft light. Let's make a little bit more room so that I can actually fit my camera in there now that it's gotten so large. Remember, this balloon is now going to expel light everywhere, not just forward, because it's a 360 degree pattern of light going, expelling from this uh, balloon now. It's going to go all over the place. We'll have softer, it'll fill the, the, the background probably a little bit. Remember, it'll probably even get a little warmer. This is all things that happen because this is now my light source, not the, the uh, speed light itself. I hope that makes sense. I feel like that's always a debate, but this is affecting everything in a positive and maybe even a negative way if you don't want these properties from this light source or modifier. I mean, think about it. All those Gary Fong or, uh, or magnetic or whatever, the stuff you keep putting on top of your light, that's changing the properties of that light because the light is going and transcending through it and then taking the properties of whatever it's transcending through and becoming that. That's exactly what's happening here with this balloon and this bag. All right, let's take this shot. I'm talking way too much. Pop, TTL, and there you go. Way softer light. Even the background comes up. Let's put these side by side really quick. You can actually see one for one, the, the shot we just took is a little bit warmer. And if you look at the chin shadow, you can see how the definitive line gets broken up because the light became larger and actually more diffused. Now this is cool, but we could actually even refine this even further with even more junk. Are you ready for this guys? I know, I know. The real Brooklyn reflector. I know we always think about the foam core with the foil on it as the Brooklyn reflector. It's a joke me and Daniel Norton uh, say all the time. If you haven't checked out Daniel's channel, by the way, you should go check that out. So these are uh, the smaller boxes, the 12 inches. I wish I got the bigger ones, but around here, all the pizza places are using brown cardboard now all of a sudden. And just so you know, white pizza boxes aren't all the same. There is a matte white and then there's clay board. These are clay board. They have a bit of a sheen to them. You can actually see that if I do this, it's going to reflect pretty nicely and thus break up all the shadows. You see that? So why wouldn't it happen here? In fact, having a light that's spilling everywhere like we've been talking about makes it way easier to grab the light that's spilling away from it and reflect it back in. 
That's why when you guys put a grid or something that's really focusable or a snoot or something on a light, it's hard to actually reflect the fill light in there because it's actually not spreading enough to hit the reflector and then reflect back in. But let's throw this one in here. I'm gonna go with, mm, I think this one has a little bit of a nicer sheen to it. Let's take a look. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it right in there, pull it up as close to Sheila as I can and actually see it in frame and then just drop it right out of frame, just on the edge. Remember, the closer this is, the more fill light I get. So the maximum amount of fill I'm gonna get is as close as I can get without physically being in frame and seeing it. So let's take a shot. I'm gonna put it right in there and focus on her eye. I'm gonna pull it in there. It's, I'm actually touching her chin with it. Let's back that out. And you can actually see how we went from this dense sh shadow going on here to a more opened up neckline. You can actually see it, like this whole face has opened up. You can actually see right about here, probably more with the nose, where shadows start opening up and you start seeing a little drop in uh, texture. You can see our upper lip changes and all that kind of stuff. And this is just, all we're doing is taking the principle of let's make the light bigger, we happen to be diffusing it because of the balloon and we're just taking the residual light, the light that's falling away and just reflecting it right back into her. I would rather this be a bigger uh, pizza box, but it'd be way easier to do this demo. However, uh, I'm using what I got and this is kind of what happened. So what is all this? Why are we even doing this? Well, think about it this way. If you're in a hard spot and you go, well, I only have this speed light, but maybe I have something that could uh, I could shoot the light into. Maybe you could hang a bed sheet and make that a giant soft box. It's, there's so many things we can do and there's plenty of videos I've done out there. You can check them out on Adorama. I did a self headshot with a single speed light using a bed sheet and you can see how much softer you can make the light. This is just a fun little thing, but it doesn't just stop there. Now, remember I said it takes the positive and the negative qualities? Well, sometimes you can take the negative quality that might be this changes the color of this light to warmer and think of it more as, well, what if I use different balloons or different substrates and get used that to my advantage? Like, I don't know, maybe we'll turn them into a form of DIY gels. Oh, these always taste so terrible, yo. So think of it this way, I shoot my light through this, I get a blue light, right? Well, I have a very dark background going on here, so why don't I mount two lights on either side of her with different colored balloons, and then I'll get two different colored hair lights, and because it's expelling, look, <laughs> because it's expelling light all over the place, it'll even hit that background and it'll break up that black background we're getting from having a no exposure, because this will create the exposure. Let's do that. And we're gonna zoom the heads all the way out. I should have mentioned that beginning. The head is zoomed all the way out on my key light, and they're gonna be zoomed out all the way on these lights, because we wanna get as much of a spread as we can on these lights to uh, fill the balloon. We're not trying to shoot through the balloon, we're trying to make the balloons illuminate, right? So let's get this uh, more settled in, and uh, we will put a blue balloon on that light, why not? The other thing I, you guys should remember is don't hammer down on your light, meaning don't go a thousand frames per second doing this because your lights will em, uh, emit heat and thus pop the balloon. So the more you expand the balloon, the thinner they get, the more susceptible they are to popping, which isn't cool for your model. And uh, you know, the, uh, the less you inflate it, the thicker the rubber gets, the harder it is for the light to transcend. Or maybe you want that because you want denser color from a color balloon like the blue one back there. So we need a color on this one. Uh, we got green, pink, or purple. Let me get some votes out there. We got green, purple, pink. I'm seeing a lot of, I'm seeing some greens. I'm seeing a bunch of, pink? A lot of pink, a lot of people going for pink. Pink and blue just seems really generic to me. That seems like the, the go-to. Uh, you know what, we'll do it because we've got a cool light over there. We'll do a warm light over here and uh, we'll see what we get. Okay. 
congrats. Okay, give this some height. I'm gonna put these back here a little bit so they're more uh, this way rather than straight up from the side. And we should get like a pretty interesting looking uh, cotton candy kind of look, I'm guessing. Let's take a look. Oh, can't forget the pizza box. I mean, the pizza box is totally part of this now. So I set those backlights, by the way, to uh, two stops under full power, just to give me like a good blast. There's no real science to that one. I could light meter it, but whatever. We're just kind of having fun. I hope you guys are kind of having fun with the whole thing as well. Like you don't just take this too seriously. If you're taking this too seriously, you're doing it wrong. Let's put it that way. That is 100% correct. And there you go, guys. Uh, you have some really nice fun lights on either side, some gels sort of in a way. Uh, and the background opens up to some weird purple color, right? So we started here and we ended up there, which is pretty cool in my opinion. You have a nice smooth, soft, filled in key light. You have some color on the background and this is all just for fun. You could do whatever you want here. It's really up to you. It's just a matter of cleaning up what the light is giving you. So if it's giving me a lot of power and a hard light, we're just making it bigger to make it softer. It's diffusing itself on its own because it's a, a white balloon and a plastic bag. It's going to scatter the light. It's spreading light all over because it's 360 degrees with the balloons itself. We're reflecting back in with a white piece of cardboard, which is just a pizza box. And we eliminated the need for a background light because we opened up the background with the expulsion happening from these balloons. So it's just a really fun thing to do. If you wanted to play some other games, you could easily just throw some tin foil across the uh, pizza box and get a silver reflector if you wanted to. We're not gonna see that much of a difference if I did it here because she's a white painted mannequin. Uh, maybe one day we'll do it again with a live model, but some of you have probably seen that on some of my demos on Adorama. If you want to check that out live, go to Adorama's Facebook ch uh, channel or page rather, and go to their video library. You can find it under Creative Solutions with Speed Lights. Go check that one out. That was a lot of fun. And I've done this uh, so many times uh, live and it's always different. And that's kind of what makes it fun, but that's also what kind of makes it maddening if you're trying to make it a real, uh, piece of gear. It, it isn't because it's so inconsistent. You're going to be flying all over the place with this, but that's kind of the organic nature of it. The reason we buy actual modifiers and um, professionally made stuff is to take out the variable, to take out the guesswork, to know what we're getting if we use that tool. That's like saying, oh, I don't know if the screwdriver is going to fit. It might work. It might not work. But if it worked for that one time, cool. But if it doesn't always work and choose the screw up, there is no point of, uh, of using it, right? So it's kind of something like, if you think of it like that, it, it, I don't know. I'm trying to just give some sort of logic to this, but is there logic? I mean, look what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna try to make this a series. We'll do some other things uh, where we can take household items and just modify our lights, do some cool effects. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down below because uh, I, I think it'd be a really cool thing to put out like maybe once a month. I'm working really hard on this YouTube channel. Uh, I am self-producing, so I'm trying to do as much as I can. And I think uh, putting something like that this into play is a lot of fun to uh, do. Also, don't forget, we have a version of all of this using gift bags. I'm gonna put a link to that down below or maybe I can figure out how to do those YouTube cards over here or something like that. But uh, every uh, Christmas season or holiday season or whatever you wanna call it, I would show you guys how to make your own soft boxes out of the gift bags with the tissue paper. Colored tissue paper will give you a similar effect to this, right? And the tissue paper itself is a diffusion material and that acts like what a soft box is doing, making a large diffused front to make a larger light. So uh, you guys can check that out. That was with a live model. So you guys would probably like that. This was really early on the channel. So I apologize for the production quality. But yeah, if you guys like this video, don't forget to hit like, don't forget to hit subscribe, plus the bell to get notified more videos like this come out. I appreciate your time. Join me on all social, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Last X Witness. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.